The AIM-54 Phoenix is a radar-guided, long-range air-to-air missile, carried in clusters of up to six missiles on the Grumman F-14 Tomcat, its only launch platform. A Phoenix was the United States' only long-range air-to-air missile. The combination of Phoenix missile and the ANAWG-9 guidance radar was the first aerial weapons system that could simultaneously engage multiple targets. Both the missile and the aircraft were used by the United States Navy and are now retired, the AIM-54 Phoenix in 2004 and the F-14 in 2006. They were replaced by the shorter-range AIM-120 AMRAAM, employed on the F-A-18 Hornet and FF Super Hornet. Following the retirement of the F-14 by the U.S. Navy, the weapon's only current operator is the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force. Brevity code FOX-3 was used when firing the AIM-54. Development, background, since 1951, the Navy faced the initial threat from the two Polar to 4 k ball-carrying anti-ship missiles. Eventually, during the height of the Cold War, the threat would have actually expanded into regimental-sized raids of two 16 Badger and two 22 m backfire bombers equipped with low-flying, long-range, high-speed, nuclear-armed cruise missiles and considerable electronic countermeasures of various types. The Navy would require a long-range, long-endurance interceptor aircraft to defend carrier battle groups against this threat. The proposed F-6D Missilia was intended to fulfill this mission and oppose the attack far from the fleet it was defending. The weapon needed for interceptor aircraft, the Bendix AAMN-10 Eagle, was to be an air-to-air -air missile of unprecedented range when compared to contemporary AIM-7 Sparrow missiles. It would work together with Westinghouse ANAPQ-81 radar. However, the Missilia project was cancelled in December 1960. AIM-54. In the early 1960s Navy made the next interceptor attempt with the F-111B, and they needed a new missile design. At the same time, the USAF cancelled the projects for their land-based high-speed interceptor aircraft, the North American XF-108 Rapier and the Lockheed YF-12, and left the capable AIM-47 Falcon missile at a quite advanced stage of development, but with no effective launch platform. The AIM-54 Phoenix, developed for the F-111B Fleet Air Defense Fighter, had an airframe with four cruciform fins that was a scaled-up version of the AIM-47. One characteristic of the Missilia ancestry was that the radar sent it mid-course corrections, which allowed the fire control system to loft the missile up over the target into thinner air where it had better range. The F-111B was cancelled in 1968. Its weapons system, the AIM-54 working with the AWG-9 radar, migrated to the new U.S. Navy fighter project, the VFX, which would later become the F-14 Tomcat. In 1977, development of a significantly improved Phoenix version, the AIM-54C, was developed to better counter projected threats from tactical anti-naval aircraft and cruise missiles and its final upgrade included a reprogrammable memory capability to keep pace with emerging ECM. Usage in comparison to other weapon systems, the AIM-54-AWG-9 combination was the first to have multiple track capability and launch. The large 1000 LB missile is equipped with a conventional warhead. The AWG-9 radar system carried by the F-111B and F-14 Tomcat was one of largest and most powerful ever fitted to a fighter. On the F-14, four missiles can be carried under the fuselage tunnel attached to special aerodynamic pallets, plus two under glove stations. A full load of six Phoenix missiles and the unique launch rails weigh in at over 8,000 LB, about twice the weight of sparrows, so it was more common to carry a mixed load of four Phoenix, two Sparrow and two Sidewinder missiles. Before the introduction of the Phoenix missile, most other U.S. aircraft relied on the smaller, less expensive AIM-7 Sparrow. Classified as a medium-range missile. Guidance for the Sparrow required that the launching aircraft use its radar to continuously illuminate a single target for the missile's passive seeker to track, or guidance would be lost. This method meant the aircraft no longer had a search capability while supporting the launched Sparrow, effectively reducing situational awareness. 
the Tomcat AWG-9 radar was capable of tracking up to 24 targets in track while scan mode, with the AWG-9 selecting up to six priority targets for potential launch by the AIM-54. The pilot or radar intercept officer could then launch the AIM-54 Phoenix missiles when launch parameters were met. The large tactical information display in the Rio's cockpit gave an unprecedented amount of information to the aircrew and, importantly, the AWG-9 could continually search and track multiple targets after Phoenix missiles were launched, thereby maintaining situational awareness of the battle space. Link-4 data link capability allowed U.S. Navy Tomcats to share information with the E-2C Hawk IAW aircraft, and during Desert Shield in 1990, the Link-4A was introduced and allowed the Tomcats to have a fighter-to-fighter -fighter data link capability, further enhancing overall situational awareness. The F-14D entered service with the JTIDS that brought the even better Link-16 data link picture to the cockpit. Active Guidance the Phoenix has several guidance modes and achieves its longest range by using mid-course updates from the F-14 Ares per byte AWG-9 radar as it climbs to cruise between 80,000 EFT and 100,000 EFT at close to Mach 5. Phoenix uses its high altitude to gain gravitational potential energy, which is later converted into kinetic energy as the missile dives at high velocity towards its target. At around 11 miles from the target, the missile activates its own radar to provide terminal guidance. Minimum engagement range for the Phoenix is around 2 and me. Active homing would initiate upon launch at this distance. Service history, U.S. combat experience. The Gulf of Sergera incident, in which American F-14s shot down two Libyan Su-22s, is sometimes thought to have involved AIM-54s. However, the engagement was conducted at short ranges using the AIM-9 Sidewinder. The other US F-14 fighter-to-fighter engagement, the Gulf of Sergera incident, used AIM-7 Sparrow and Sidewinder missiles, but not the Phoenix. In training, a Phoenix hit a target drone at a range of 132 miles. On January 5, 1999, a pair of US F-14s fired two Phoenixes at Iraqi MiG-25 southeast of Baghdad. Both AIM-54's rocket motors failed and neither missile hit its target. On September 9, 1999 another US F-14 launched an AIM-54 at an Iraqi MiG-23 that was heading south into the no-fly zone from al Haddam Air Base west of Baghdad. The missile missed eventually going into the ground after the Iraqi fighter reversed course and fled north. The AIM-54 Phoenix was retired from USN service on September 30, 2004. F-14 Tomcats were retired on September 22, 2006. They were replaced by shorter-range AIM-120 AMRAMs, employed on the FF Super Hornet. Both the F-14 Tomcat and AIM-54 Phoenix missile continue in the service of the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force, although the operational abilities of these aircraft and the missiles are questionable, since the U.S. refused to supply spare parts and maintenance after the 1979 revolution, except for a brief period during the Iran-Contra affair. Despite the much vaunted capabilities, a Phoenix was rarely used in combat, with only two confirmed launches and no confirmed targets destroyed in U.S. Navy service, though a large number of kills were claimed by Iranian F-14s during the Iran Euro Iraq War. The USAF F-15 Eagle had responsibility for overland combat air patrol duties in Desert Storm in 1991, primarily because of the inboard F-15 IFF capabilities. The Tomcat did not have the requisite IFF capability mandated by the JFACC to satisfy the rules of engagement to utilize the Phoenix capability at beyond visual range. From an engineering and service standpoint, the Phoenix could be said to be a notable success. As the only surviving member of the Falcon missile family, it was not adopted by any other nation besides Iran, any other U.S. armed service, or used on any other aircraft. It was heavy large, expensive and not practical in close combat compared to the Sparrow or Amram. Iranian Combat Experience There is very little information available regarding Iran's use of its 79 F-14A Tomcats in most Western outlets. 
the exception being a book released by Osprey Publishing titled Iranian F-14 Tomcats in Combat by Tom Cooper and Farzad Bishop. Most of the research contained in the book was based on pilot interviews. Reports vary on the use of the 285 missiles supplied to Iran, during the Iran Euro Iraq War, 1980 Euro 88. Some claim that it is unlikely that the Phoenix was used operationally. First, as difficult as the missile and fire control systems were to operate, Iran had hired many American technicians. Upon leaving, they took most of the knowledge about how to operate and maintain these complex weapon systems with them. Also, without a steady supply of engineering support from Hughes Aircraft Missile Systems Group and corresponding spares and upgrades, even a technically competent operator would have extreme difficulty fielding operational weapons. Others claim that the primary use of the F-14 was as an airborne early warning aircraft, guarded by other fighters. Supporters of these claims point to the fact that, in the 1991 Gulf War, Iraqi fighter pilots consistently turned and fled as soon as American F-14 pilots turned on their fighters' very distinctive ANAWG-9 radars, which suggests that Iraqi pilots had learned to avoid the F-14. According to Cooper, the Islamic Republic of Iran Air Force was able to keep its F-14 fighters and AIM-54 missiles in regular use during the entire Iran Euro Iraq War, though periodic lack of spares grounded at times large parts of the fleet. At worst, during late 1987, the stock of AIM-54 missiles was at its lowest, with less than 50 operational missiles available. The missiles needed fresh thermal batteries that could only be purchased from the U.S. Iran found a clandestine buyer that supplied it with batteries a euro though those did cost up to US$10,000 each. Iran did receive spares and parts for both the F-14s and AIM-54s from various sources during the Iran Euro Iraq War, and has received more spares after the conflict. Iran started a heavy industrial program to build spares for the planes and missiles, and although there are claims that it no longer relies on outside sources to keep its F-14s and AIM-54s operational, there is evidence that Iran continues to procure parts clandestinely. Iran claims to be working on building an equivalent missile. Variants AIM-54A, original model that became operational with the U.S. Navy in about 1974, and it was also exported to Iran in modest numbers before the Iran hostage crisis beginning in 1979. AIM-54B, also known as the dry missile. A version with simplified construction and no coolant conditioning did not enter series production. Developmental work started in January 1972. 7X AIM-54B missiles were created for testing, six of them by modifying pilot production IVE PIP rounds. After two successful test firings, the dry missile effort was cancelled for being not cost-effective. AIM-54C, lone improved model was ever produced. It used digital electronics in the place of the analog electronics of the AIM-54A. This model had better abilities to shoot down low and high altitude anti-ship missiles. This model took over from the AIM-54A beginning in 1986. AIM-54E CCM sealed round, more capabilities and electronic counter-countermeasures. It did not require cool and conditioning during flights on board F-14s and not fired deployed beginning in 1988. Because the AIM-54 ECCM sealed received no coolant, F-14s carrying this version of the missile could not exceed a specified air speed. There were also test, evaluation, ground training, and captive air training versions of the missile. Designated ATM-54, AEM-54, DATM-54A, and CATM-54. The flight versions had A and C versions. The DATM-54 was not made in a C version as there was no change in the ground handling characteristics. Sea Phoenix, a 1970s proposal for a ship-launched version of the Phoenix as an alternative replacement for the Sea Sparrow Point defense system. It would also have provided a medium-range SAM capability for smaller and or non-Aegis equipped vessels. The Sea Phoenix system would have included a modified Shibin version of the ANAWG-9 radar. 
Hughes Aircraft touted the fact that 27 out of 29 major elements of the standard ANAWG-9 could be used in the ship and version with little modification. Each system would have consisted of one AWG-9 radar, with associated controls and displays, and a fixed 12-cell launcher for the Phoenix missiles. In the case of an aircraft carrier, for example, at least three systems would have been fitted in order to give overlapping coverage throughout the full 360 a degree. Both land and ship-based tests of modified Phoenix missiles and a containerized AWG-9 were successfully carried out from 1974 onwards. AIM-54B, a land-based version for the USMC was also proposed. It has been suggested that the AIM-54B would have been used in operational Sea Phoenix systems, although that version had been cancelled by the second half of the 1970s. Ultimately, a mix of budgetary and political issues meant that, despite being technically and operationally attractive, further development of the Sea Phoenix did not proceed. Fake or 90, in February 2013 Iran reportedly tested an indigenous long-range air-to-air missile. In September 2013 it displayed FACOR 2013 on a military parade which looked almost identical to AIM-54 Phoenix. Characteristics The following is a list AIM-54 Phoenix specifications, primary function, long-range air-launched air intercept missile, contractor, Hughes Aircraft Company and Raytheon Corporation, unit cost, about $477,000, but this varied greatly especially as the years went by, power plant, solid propellant rocket motor built by Hercules Incorporated, length, 13 FT, weight, 1,000 euro 1,040 pounds, diameter, 15 in, wingspan, 3 FT, range, over 100 nautical miles, speed, 3,000 plus mile per hour, guidance system, semi-active and active radar homing, warheads, proximity fuse, High explosive, warhead weight, 135 pounds, users, U.S., Iran, date deployed, 1974, date retired, September 30, 2004, actual range classified, see also, AIM-152 AAAM, AIM-47 Falcon, Vimpel at 33, the Russian air-to-air -air missile most similar to the AIM-54 Phoenix, list of missiles, missile designation, Combat history of the F-14, related lists, list of military aircraft of the United States, list of missiles, references. External links, NASA Dryden Flight Research Center, Phoenix Missile Hypersonic Test Bed.